All right, this is uh, Pete here. We're live. We are live. So uh, we're doing a live broadcast tonight on what really wins matches. And I have started early just to allow people time to come in and for me to test out stuff. Uh, so um, we're just kind of hanging out. We're kind of in a holding phase. I just wanted to make sure this got off to a smooth start. It's always uh, interesting when you do live events. Uh, you're always wondering, do people hear me? <laughs> do, uh, do people see me? Is the internet working? So I just wanted to make sure we uh, we got on early here. So uh, it'll be a couple of minutes before we officially start the broadcast. And tonight's topic is what really wins matches. And and why I said that is because um, I do know that we want to compare ourselves to the pros, you know, Djokovic, Federer, and all that kind of stuff. But you know, the reality is, and I'm certainly nowhere close to those guys either. Is we're just not those guys, so we don't necessarily need to be doing exactly what they're doing to uh, be winning a lot of matches. All right, and so that's what that's what we're really going to be focusing on today. I see people are coming on. Uh, if you could just let me know, A, if you hear me, uh, and it's very, very helpful. Um, you should be able to make a comment below, uh, below the video. And that would really, really help me to know if you guys can hear me, see me, all that kind of good stuff. So we're gonna do a little bit of sound checks uh, before we get started. Um, we're starting at 9.15, it's 9.11 now, so I'm just allowing people to kind of funnel in and um, say hello and test stuff out, and then we'll be getting into our topic, you know, very close to 9.15. I don't, I don't want to drag on too long of us just waiting for people to come in, okay? So we're going to probably be on for about 45 minutes today. I'm going to refresh my uh, Hangouts page just to see if anybody's made any comments. Guys, Please don't be shy on these things. I need interaction, especially when it comes to letting me know if you guys can hear me and see me and all that kind of good stuff. So as you come in, comment below and let me know if you uh, see me and hear me and all that kind of good stuff. Right now, I see that I am still the only comment. That's the, that's the, the fear of these things is people are, are shy when they come on. I do see people are, are on, and I know it takes a little bit to... Uh, to get over the shyness, but that is going to help me know if you are hearing me or not. Let's see, we are three minutes away. And again, if you're there, just let me know who you are, where you're from, that kind of thing. And then we'll be getting going here soon. This broadcast is for our KickServe Plus members out there, we're calling it Thrive 45, and the idea is that we're gonna go through a 45-day program. It's gonna be super intense as far as lots of live events to where we're gonna be getting educated on things like tonight, where it's kind of like the strategy type side of things, the mental side of things. Uh, we're gonna be doing lots of workouts together. We did one yesterday, which was a lot of fun. I probably hadn't worked that hard uh, out that hard in months, so it was challenging for me. And um, and we're going to be doing also where we call I'm calling them stroke and tell, to where you can uh, where you can basically show me your stroke and I can watch it and I can I can correct it. Uh, so we're, we'll be very live, very interactive. All right. So uh, let's see here. What time are we at? Let's do a little time check. Nine fourteen. One minute till we're starting. Again, say hello if you are there. Comment below. Uh, the video, you should be able to, to see a comment section below the video. That's going to be helpful. Uh, Jake commented from New Jersey, but in SD. Okay, so we do have a comment on YouTube. I don't think that's on the Google Hangout page. Always interesting to see where people are coming in at. All right, 914. Again, guys, I'm just kind of hanging out right now, testing things. We'll be getting started. I appreciate everybody's patience out there. If you could let me know, though, if you do see me, do hear me, that is going to be super helpful. Okay, that's going to help me know. 
if I'm doing the right thing, if you guys can hear me. I do see Andre's on. Andre, you, Andre, I, I, I think you sent me an email earlier saying it's going to be like super early in the morning for you. So I'm impressed that you're uh, you're here. Very impressed. All right. All right, it's 9.15. So I'm officially starting tonight's broadcast. So I'm officially starting tonight's broadcast. Uh, how is everybody out there? This is a broadcast for our Thrive 45 members. And I'm super, super excited about this. This is going to be a lot of fun as we go forward. I'm sure there's going to be some bumps in the road, some things we need to work out. Uh, but hopefully things will go as smoothly as possible and, and you guys will be patient uh, with me as well. Uh, so uh, if you do lose me, you know, sometimes the internet can go out on live broadcast. Um, if you do lose me, I will, I will be back. I'm getting some text here. Um, I will be back if you do lose me. So if you lose me, I'll come back. If I don't come back, you know I worked my heart out to try and get back, and somehow the internet just didn't didn't come back. But you know, if you do lose me, don't don't leave. I'll probably be back. Um, just want to. Uh, hopefully, you guys are enjoying the membership. Let me know if, if you guys are having any, any issues getting in or or forgetting your passwords or anything like that. You can always email me at crunchtimecoaching at gmail .com and I'll be happy to help you out. You can even. Give me a call uh, if you'd like uh, at 770-990-8034, and I will make sure that we get you get you in. Um, also, before we get into tonight's topic, tomorrow at 1 p.m., we're going to be doing a Blab, and Blab, for a silly name, is a pretty cool platform to where what we're going to be doing on that Blab is I'm going to be uh, Basically, like I am now, I'll probably have the, the camera a little further away so so I can so you can see my whole body, and you can come in and show me a stroke, and and I can help fix it. So if you're having trouble with your kick serve in particular, since you've signed up for a kick serve course, you can show me if if you're uh, have good access internet access on the court, you can actually be on the court on your mobile phone and do that. So so pretty cool. All right. Um, now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to just take one more look at the page, the Google Plus. But all right, cool. So Ta all right, Tachi, cool. Tachi's from Austin, Texas. He's here. Um, very nice to see you. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be sharing my screen, and then I'm going to be going through a presentation. Uh, so this will be the last time you'll see me for a little while, but you'll be able to to hear me. All right. So let me come back here. Going to be sharing my screen. Uh, welcome everybody. We're getting right into the topic right now. So I'm going to share my entire screen. And I think it is doing that. And so we're going to go right into our presentation, which is what works at the rec level. Um, so here we go, guys. And another thing too is this is loading up. If you guys struggle to to hear and and see me and that kind of thing you can actually text me so write this down you can text me at 770-990-8034 that's 770-990-8034 and and if you cannot you know see something or hear something uh text me so i know that there is a technical problem because right now i'm not able to read your guys comments uh here comes the presentation what wins at the recreational level? And so uh, the first key point I want to make is that, you know, we are not Roger Federer and we're not playing Novak Djokovic, right? <laughs> and Roger Federer is kind of like the skill shot maker who's always pressing. And Novak Djokovic is that guy who breaks your heart and comes up with amazing passing shots. And, and this is a good thing that we are not these people, okay? And, and I am nowhere close to these people all right so i'm not trying to act like i'm great and you guys aren't great we're, we're just we're just not at that level okay as much as we want to you know learn from them and work the shots that they have and 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 you know mimic them as best they can i mean i, I try and do the shots roger has and novak has and learn from it and, and teach my students that 
But I also have to realize when I'm playing a match or I'm, ha- or I'm coaching that, you know, we aren't those players. <laughs> they, they are at a, a way different level than us. So I think, you know, number one is we want to stop putting unnecessary pressure on ourselves to come up with something great all the time. I, th- I think that that's one thing that, that some recreational players can tend to do is, is they're trying to hit these amazing shots, but they really don't need to. All right. And so what we want to do instead, if you guys can do this, I'm telling you, this is going to be huge for you. If you can make your opponent make as many skillful shots and this, and I'm going to explain what that means. If you can make them make as many skillful shots as possible in a match, you are going to win so many more matches. All right. Your goal is to keep your risk level down to a bare minimum. And this does not mean that you're constantly on defense or pushing either. So don't think that this is going to be a lecture about how you need to be a, a, a what, what people don't like to, to be a quote unquote, you know, boring type pushing player. Okay. Uh, but if you can do these things, you're going to win a lot more matches, a lot easier, give yourself a lot less headache. All right. So um, how I actually decided to do this topic tonight was I was coaching one of my students, Mike Stratton, really cool guy. We were doing this drill to where uh, we were rallying back and forth for three shots. We were going cross court. He's a doubles guy right now. We were rallying cross court for three shots. And I either say you or me. And then if I said you, then he'd have to figure out a way to come to the net and I would have to pass him. He didn't have to come off the first ball. If I said me, then I would have to come to the net and he would have to pass me. So there's a great drill you guys can do. Great drill. Um, and he was always pre- he was always trying to do too much with, with the ball, you know, whether he did an approach shot or whether he w- or I'd come to the net, he'd try and hit this amazing passing shot, and he didn't need to do that. So what we're going to do is today we're going to look at 10 skillful shots you want to make your opponent play often, all right? And at the top of my list is the overhead. The, the overhead is a shot – and I've, I've coached now for over 20 plus years. Very few juniors, very good juniors I teach have good overheads. Uh, very few players who are adults at that 2 5, 3 0, 3 5, 4 0 level, even up to 4 5, even up to 5 0, guys. Lots of people do not hit overheads well consistently. They may burn you a couple times, they may smash it down your throat once or twice. But if you give them a decent lob, there's very few people who can consistently put that ball away. And so what's so good about making people hit a lot of overheads is this is a great way. You know, you think you're playing defense, but this is a fantastic way to take back the offense. You know, you get you you get players that are on the net. They're on they're on, on offense if they're on the net and you get them to back off the net. And if they do not hit a great overhead, you know, A couple, three things are going to happen. A, they're going to hit a great overhead and you're going to clap your racket. B, they're going to miss the overhead, which happens very often. Or C, they're not going to put it away. And this gives you a chance now to hit the ball at their feet and then take the net. All right. So as you're hitting that lob, you're trying, you're, you're hanging back off the baseline and you're trying to see what kind of hit they're hitting. You look at their body language, the you know, are they in an offensive position? Are they in a defensive position? Are they struggling to get to the ball? And then your best case scenario, if they hit it in, is that you can then chip the ball or hit a spin shot at their feet, and then you can move to the net. And if you're playing with, with a doubles partner, then you can move the net with your doubles partner. All right, so that that's key point number one. We're going to go through three key points, and then I'm going to stop sharing the screen and see if you guys have any comments. Okay, so if you have any questions or anything, start writing them down on the page, and then I'll stop sharing my screen and see what you guys ha- are thinking so far of this. So, so please give me feedback. Hopefully, you are liking it. All right, the next thing you want to do, if if you're playing singles or doubles, all these tactics work. By the way, so this is not none of none of these um, skillful shots you're going to make your opponents play are you know just about singles or just about doubles. They work in both. Um, elements. And that is test their touch. All right. So this, this is a picture of McEnroe. He, he, he had such amazing touch. I don't know if you guys really got to watch, whoever got to watch him play. I mean, his touch was awesome. His behavior was terrible, but he was, he was fun to watch. 
Uh, but again, at the rec level, if you can make people think that their only shot is to hit a little drop shot on you, uh, that is a very powerful thing. And you can do this. You can do this in a number of ways. Number one, from the baseline, if you're just if you're just very consistent, and you can keep making your opponents play balls. Um, sometimes when they get their first look, if they feel like they can't hit through you, they're going to try a drop shot. And often when they try a drop shot, they either a miss it or b they they hit it too deep, and then that will allow you to come in and and put the ball away on them. As they're coming to the net, if you can hit. Rather than think of your first shot as like a power shot, you know, if you if you just kind of very lightly touch the ball over the net to where it's going to drop over the net, um, now they've got to get down low. And often when they get down low, they're they're not going to feel comfortable volleying the ball deep. They're going to try and hit some little touch angle shot. And again, this is going to allow you to take the offense. So a lot of these shots that you're looking at that you don't think are very aggressive allow you to be very aggressive on the very next ball. And I think people get it the opposite a lot of times. They're looking to be aggressive with their first shot and win the point all in one shot and, and rather just, you know, playing shots like these to really exploit, see what kind of skills your opponent has, and then you can come and hit a bigger shot that you probably enjoy hitting more. All right, the next one is you want to make them move up and low, all right? And this, again, is if you're playing singles or doubles. There's a very distinct shot that Roger Federer has used his whole career, and that is to hit a little uh, angled cross-court backhand slice. I'm going to um, bring up my court diagram and just show you what I mean there. So here's the tennis court, and let's say uh, – Fetters here. Let's just say this is his back, and I know it's his forehand, but we got the tennis ball there, so we might as well use it. And he would hit a shot cross court and try and aim around here. He's not trying to hit any lines. He's not trying to hit a drop shot, keeping it very low, making the opponent move up. Now, when the opponent has to move up in this area, now they now they know they have to come up with something skillful because they most likely they're they're at the point of no return. They've they've got to either a get back super quick, which leaves the court wide open for Roger, or b they've got to approach the net. And and you know how it is. You don't want to approach the net off a piece of junk because you're going to get passed. So now you're forced to do things, do shots that you don't really want to do. You put put a little more. Uh, pace on the ball. You aim a little closer to the lines. And a lot of times it's going to draw an unforced error. You know, same thing if you're playing doubles. Let's let's say you're here and you're back here. Your net, your net partner's here. Let's say you got, you know, two up, two back. And, and then your opponent's back here. You hit that little short slice shot. And now they have to Again, come in on you, and it's a great it's a great shot to use. Okay, so the short shot is really really good. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second and look at your comments. Hopefully, you guys are liking this. All right. So let's see here. I'm just going to refresh. My screen is out of focus. Oh, no. That's not good. Sorry, my screen is out of focus. Is it really, really bad? Is my screen really, really bad, guys? Let me know that, too. All right. Um, here we go. I'm going to go back in the presentation. Hope, hopefully, the screen's not too bad. I'll see any. I'll hang on for a second of any more, any more comments. So I guess you guys are hearing me okay. My screen's a little out of focus. But at least you guys can see me. I knew I knew this wasn't going to be all all better roses here. All right. So no no more comments at this point. So let me come back to here. 
Let me see where we're at. All right, very good. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, share my screen again, and we're going to continue on with the presentation. Sharing the entire screen. All right, so I think we are sharing again. Let me come minimize this, go back to our presentation, and present it. I'm, um, while we're having this, I'm, I'm happy you guys are on. This is a lot of fun for me. It's rewarding to be able to do this kind of stuff with you all. All right, so number four. And this is kind of a famous picture. Have you guys, uh, you remember this match? This is definitely a volley that Roddick is hitting against Federer. I believe it's a match point. Hold on one second. Sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Um, so this is this is a match point here, not a, no a set point for for uh, Andy Roddick, and I know that he blew this ball I think just wide, and many people thought well that's an easy volley, but look look at this volley right here who who wants to hit this volley this this volley is very very tough to to deal with, it's a nightmare, but you know what especially in rec tennis it's an it's an easy shot to find for people okay this is an easy ball. To give people they come to the net rather than think about blasting a passing shot and putting all the pressure on you again test how skillful your opponent is and make them play a ball like this i want everybody who's on this call tonight and everybody who watches the replay if you go play doubles this week test this out you know try and make say all right today i'm going to make my opponent hit five if he, if he comes in net, especially if it's doubles i'm going to make them hit five high backhand volleys. I'm going to float it with slice. I'm not going to do anything special with it. I'm not going to try and hit it near the line. I'm just going to hit it high at their backhand side and see how they deal with it. And and you don't need to rush in after it either. I, I would I would stay in, in a place where I could really survey what they're doing, you know, to react to it. Make sure you get a good split step so you can get on the ball quickly. And then move up to it. And uh, I, bet, I bet you're going to, you know, get an easy shot or they may miss it. So this is a great shot to be using to make your uh, opponents have to come up with skillful shots. So you don't have to, the idea of this whole presentation, guys, is taking the pressure off of yourself and putting it square on your opponents. And then you get to hit the highlight shots. Then, then those you know, big forehands are going to come because you're going to get a lot easier setup balls to do stuff like that with. All right. The next thing you want to do is test your opponent's second serve. Um, you can start looking at this right away in warm-ups. You know, if you, see if see if somebody you're playing has a uh, what I like to call a hammer grip, which is not the continental grip. They kind of hit it like they're hammering with their with their racket, and you know that's more of not an advanced technique, and they're not going to be able to put a lot of spin on their second serve. So they're most likely going to have to dink it in. Um, and then also people who are trying to hit their spin serve, if they're a 4-0 or below, you know, there's some 4-0s who are very good at the spin serve, but, but other like, if they're like a 3-5 and trying to spin serve, there's a good chance that they're just kind of learning it, that they're just kind of starting to perfect it a little bit. And so they're kind of nervous when they have to hit it as a second serve. So you can do things like just you know, cheat in short, give them, make them know that, hey, I, I'm about to chip and charge or i'm going to hit the ball kind of hard and and come in on you you know give them looks move around to where it looks like you're going to hit a forehand do things like that so set up in an aggressive position whether you're playing inside the court or you're favoring your forehand and make your opponent see this is not bad sportsmanship or e either you're just getting into a court position that you want to ideally play your first ball at so it's, I don't think it's cheap tactics or anything like that. And, and, and that's going to make your opponent nervous. And they'll probably double fault some more. They'll probably give you even easier second serves. 
And so you definitely want to be testing the second serve at the rec level because not many people have a second serve that they are confident in. And the bigger the point, the more you want to be showing that you're about to do something offensive. And again, you don't have to, just because you're showing an offensive posture does not mean you have to absolutely crush the ball. You know, just a nice little chip and then coming to the net, chipping the ball low, coming in on their backhand side, things like that are going to win you a lot of points. All right. What we want to do next, and this is huge. See how much you can do this now this week. This is perfect, too. This picture right here of help is absolutely perfect. Make them make first volleys all the time. Uh, when I was doing the drill with, with Mike the other day, I was coming to the net. Remember, we'd go one, two, three, and then we'd see who was going to come to the net. And when I came to the net, he was always trying to hit a passing shot. He was thinking, I've got to pass Pete. And most of the time, he'd hit the ball in the net or he'd hit the ball long. You know, he overhit, overhit, overhit. When someone's coming to the net on you, I want you to kind of get soft hands. So they're, they're approaching the net on you. I want your hands to become soft and light. And think about absorbing pace and whether you're going to chip it or give it like a nice little brush, brushing lift. You know, aim for, their, aim for their stomach or lower. If aiming lower at their legs is too hard, like if they've already got a good court position, don't force that either because then you might miss. Make them volley at their waist. You know, if it's, if it's getting up around their, their chest and shoulders, things like that on the forehand side, well, maybe, you know, that they might crush that volley and you're in some trouble. But if it's the waist or lower, most of the time they're still going to have to hit a setup volley. And, and they're probably making their first volley around the service line, which is tough. Okay, So you're in an ideal situation to where they're hitting their first volley around their service line. And this is a shot you need to make them play. You do not need to pass them on the first ball. Okay, You don't need to pass your opponents on the first ball. Uh, I'm going to, that was three more slides. I'm going to come back and stop sharing the screen just to see if you guys are still hearing me. As you can tell, I'm super paranoid about <laughs> live events, uh, but I did want to make this Thrive 45 for you guys so we can get to know each other better. I, th I think it's ultimately the best way that we can really uh, take our games to the next level and also us get to know each other. So even though live events scare me a little bit, I'm doing it, I'm going for it. I'm going to check back in. Let's see, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. How do I do that? Share, stop sharing the screen. So I should be coming back here. All right, so it looks like I'm back. And I'm just going to refresh our page and see if anybody's made any more uh, comments. If you guys who are on, you just let me know if you are enjoying tonight's content, if you are liking this, if this is helpful, that would be great. Also, tonight's a great night because we're kind of still in the, um, the pilot portion of this, the pilot program portion of this. If you could let me know, um, the voice is breaking up. I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm, I'm trying my best. Uh, that could be the connection. I don't know. Thank you for the feedback, though. What was I going to say? Oh, let me know what kind of topics you all want to hear. Okay, what kind of topics would be good for you, uh, that things you want to learn, comment in there as well. All right, I'm going to get back into the presentation. And um, so hold on, I'm about to go back into the presentation. Let's see here. Could be your connection. Maybe it's your connection. I, I don't. I don't know. Who, who knows with the internet? The internet is a great but scary thing. <laughs> That's all I'll say. The internet is awesome, but it's also scary. All right. Um, but overall, I, I love it. All right. We're going to share a screen. Go back to the entire screen. Going right back into my presentation for you guys share. All right. I think we're sharing again. And I'm going right back to the presentation. Okay. 
So here we go. We're on to the next slide. We're on to number seven. Next thing. Make your opponent hit passing shots on the run. And you can do this in singles and doubles. I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it in both. All right? Because people, when they have to hit on the move, they know that they're getting into a desperate situation. They tend to try more risky shots. Um, if they can barely reach the ball, like Maria's barely reaching the ball here, you're going to get a weak reply. But this does not mean that you have to hit for the line. Okay? You do not have to hit the ball hard. You do not have to go for the line just because you're trying to make your opponent run. You have to really think some strategy here, okay? And I'm going to give you guys a couple of strategies for making your opponents hit passing shots on the run, all right? So well, this, there's a lots of different ones you can do, but I'm just going to go through three right now. So let me uh, I'm just exit this right here. We're going to go back to our core diagram. So here's the court right here. Let's first of all do singles. Let's say we, we got our opponent is right here in the middle, and we're right here. The first thing you need to do, I would try and get yourself in a cross-court rally. All right? So however you do that, get yourself in a cross-court rally, and I would try and get it to their weak side. So for the most part, most people over here, this is their back end. So let's say I've got the ball here. My first shot, I'm going to hit a very conservative shot high over the net, not going for any lines down the line, and then try and either hit inside out, forehands on a righty, or backhands, cross court. Just getting the opponent in this corner, all right? So we get in this cross court. Now, if you get a short ball, you can bring it down the line, and then you can come in. So now they're running, but that is their forehand. But I'd like to set up the cross-court rally to the backhand to set up the backhand approach shot. So I'm not looking to actually approach unless I get an easy approach shot and go to the forehand and it makes sense I get them on the run. But what I am looking to do is go back and forth, back and forth, get another conservative shot down the line. And then now I'm making them run here increases the chance that I'm going to get a short ball. So let's say I did that. I, I make the run here, they give me the short ball. Now I'm going to approach the backhand corner. All right, so now they're having to hit a backhand passing shot on the run. So that'd be one thing I would do in singles. Now in doubles, it's a little more difficult. Let's say you got the person here at the baseline. Hopefully my mouse, you guys can see my mouse. And you got another person here at the baseline. And then you got the net player and the net player. Let's say we've got the two people back here they are in a rally. Now, one thing I would do to make someone run is hit a nice high lob. Yes, you can call it a push shot. You can do it with top spin. You can do it without top spin. Just hit it high and deep. Try and get it to bounce big. Moving your opponent back to the fence. A lot of times that's going to give you a short ball. You, you can hit three or four of those in a row if you need to. Get that short ball. I would look to either hit a top spin, a little short angle approach shot. So now they're having to run from way back there over there. or Slice it, a little chip ball. Okay, when I play singles on my forehand side, I hit probably over 90% top spin forehands. But when I play doubles, you know, some days I might hit like 40 or 50% sliced forehands, uh, chip shots, because it's such a great play in doubles and you don't have to switch your grip over. So, so it all depends. Um, I like mixing up my spins and doubles a lot, you know, to where I'll, I'll have my big spin, my western grip, and hit some forehands that way, and then change to the continental grip and chip it. So you're giving your opponent lots of different looks. So that is a great one. Another great one is, again, let's say the net person's right here, and and your net person's here, and you're back in the baseline. Just hit a nice lob over the net person. Now this person's having to run. You could make that your approach shot. Your approach shot could be a lob. So if you hit a good lob, come in behind that. And now they got to hit a pass and shot on the run. If, if, at least if you made them change formations, lots of times they're going to be messed up over here, and you'll get a short ball. And then you can approach. I, I would approach up the line to the person who switched over there, because now it's most likely their backhand. Only would I go at this net person if I had an absolute high sitter. Otherwise, people make a mistake, and once they lob over this person, then they usually hit the next shot over here because they're used to going cross court, and they hit it right to the net person, and then they're, then they're done, then they're toast. So don't, don't do that. All right. Um, let's go back to my presentation slides. So 
So that was three I think I got on the passing shots on the run three strategies for you all. Let's go to present. All right. Next, it kind of just goes the same way with what we were talking about with the, with the passing shots on the run is, is also make them lob on the run. And why I wanted to separate the two. So this slide is not going to take too long, but if you did a really good job executing the last slide that we talked about, sometimes they're, they're not going to try a passing shot, they're going to try a lob. And if, if you hit them the lob on the run, again, lots of times people are not, they don't have enough body control, enough power levers in, in their body to, to hit a nice, good high lob. And what I want you to do is look for the racket face. See if the racket face is in a position where they're going to hit a passing shot where the rack face would be more flat or is the rack face more open. We know right here that Novak Djokovic is not going to hit a passing shot. He's hitting a lob. And so why this is so important is you need to look at this very, very distinctly. You need to notice the shape because if you get them in a lob on the run, you should get a fairly easy overhead. But what happens is too many people close the net too tight. And so a mediocre lob ends up beating them. So if your opponent is running and you see this shape, do not close hard on the net. That's one thing that people get wrong is they, they play a point and they overclose the net because they're in a winning position. They can see their, their opponent is in trouble and they're showing the shape and then the ball goes right over their head. Do not make that mistake, guys, okay? You want to see the shape and you want to know a lob is coming, all right? So you can make your opponent a lob on the run. You're going to be in great shape. All right, we'll go through one more slide. Now, the next slide, this is very important, is making your opponent not only hit high backhands, but high forehands as well. When the ball gets out of the strike zone, so the strike zone is basically, you know, your chest down to your, just below your waist just below like your pockets or your skirts of your lady out there. That, that's where people like to hit the tennis ball. And it feels good to hit like groove hitting where you're, where you're grooving with somebody, you're hitting cross courts and things like that, and you're rocking the ball, and that feels great. And then you try and do that in the match, and all of a sudden your opponent is playing really, really good tennis. Why is that? Because yeah, you're hitting a solid ball, but you're hitting everything right in their strike zone. So, again, sometimes getting that ball with more topspin and higher is good. Sometimes it's the loopy ball that's not even anything special to look at. At the rec level, can make your opponent hit you a short ball to where then you can come in and practice your Roger Federer forehand, you know, the, the big shots you want to practice. But just sitting back there at the baseline, pounding the shot cross court, you know, at the same pace, a nice steady pace, a lot of times that's going to get your opponent grooved, and that's going to have their exact result you don't want, right? Now they're in the rhythm, they're in the groove, and everything you hit them is coming back even better than you're hitting it to them. So uh, try and get that ball high the forehand, rather than just getting in a rocking forehand cross court rally back and forth. I know that's a lot of fun, but if you're on the losing end of most of those, that's not a lot of fun. All right, so we've got one more slide to go to. But before that, I'm again going to stop sharing. Let's see if there's any more comments out there. All right, uh, here we go. Stopping the share, exiting here, making sure my camera is working. All right, the camera does appear to be working. Going to come back on this page and refresh. So guys, uh, let me know. We got one more slide to go. Let me know if you have any questions. This will be signed off relatively soon after the last slide. And um, we are here, and I'm still just getting, uh, you know, that, that the connection could be bad, the audio could be bad, but, but um, hopefully not too bad. All right, here we go. Last slide. Uh, let me share again.
So I'm going to share my screen with you all. Screen share. Come on, you can do it. Why is that not doing that? Okay, screen share an entire screen. Share. All right. And go back to present. Okay, and last slide. All right. So we've gone through lots of different strategies tonight. I have my piece here on the ground because obviously I don't think you want to hit that over and over again in a match, right? So what you want to do is you and you can start to figure this out in the warm-up, in the first couple of games, uh, taking note of what's winning points throughout the match and start to really hone in on what is your opponent's least favorite shot. Is it A? The, the most obvious one is the backhand, right? That's the most obvious one. Um, when Roger Federer played Nadal in his prime, you know, it was such a bad matchup for Roger because Nadal had that huge, heavy topspin forehand, the, the out wide serve to the backhand, and Rafa pretty much hit like 90% of his balls to that backhand, and that's pretty much what he did. It wasn't, wasn't a rocket science, he was just doing it over and over again, and then when Federer was forced to attack because he didn't want to be in that position all game long, so Federer was always trying to create, then Rafa was a genius at, you know, defense and hitting very special shots on the run. And um, so that was pretty much like the matchup all day long. So, of course, the backhand. It could be their forehand, though, guys. You know, look at what kind of grips they have, what kind of technique. If they start, you know, some people will start out hitting a really nice forehand in the match, and all of a sudden when it gets closer, you'll see that they swing less at it or they even change their grip. And, and when you see that, then you know, okay, I've got to hit this ball to their forehand like all day because they are starting to get really nervous. They can't even hit the forehand anymore. When we started warming up, they were hitting the ball great on the forehand side. That goes to show that lots of people who hit the ball well in, in practice and in warm-up, uh, they are still self-conscious about certain shots that their pro will tell them. And I have lots of my students where I'm like, you know, your, your, your forehand is fine, your backhand is fine. You shouldn't be so, you know, self-conscious about it. Look how we're hitting now. You're hitting a great shot. But, you know, until they believe it's a great shot, it's not. So some shots are technically pretty good. When it, when it gets into crunch time, they don't have any confidence in it. So looks are not always the determining factor either. Look at how they're responding to hitting that shot under pressure situations. The other thing is volleys. Lots, lots of people do not like to come to the net. You know, so so just look at, just start looking at their volley in general. Then if they have a decent volley, then start to figure out what volley is stronger. Is it their forehand volley? Is it their backhand volley? Um, these are things you want to be looking at. Do they like to slice their backhand more than they like to topspin on their backhand? All this kind of stuff, what you're trying to do is not be super creative to where you're moving the ball from side to side to side on the court. That's very, very hard to do. You're trying to hone in on one weakness and just pick at it and pick at it and pick at it and pick at it. That's what really drives people crazy. A lot of times when you're moving the ball all over the court, uh, you don't allow people to get nervous because they're moving and they're hitting lots of different shots and they feel like they don't have to hit their, their one shot that they dread hitting over and over again. And so they don't get as nervous. But if you find that one weakness and you're like, aha, I know that's your weakness. And you know that I know that's your weakness. And I'm going to make you hit it all day long. That's where the mental game starts to really take shape, and that's where you can absolutely see your opponent just Thank you. 